Hi guys, what is the difference between being liked or being respected? This shows up a lot with my clients. Hi, I'm Carrie Millspaw, business and lifestyle coach, and I'm here to help you get really clear on differentiating the two, okay? So being liked is great. Once upon a time, I was in timeshare sales. It was hell, it was 2008. I had just gotten my timeshare license, which is very similar to a real estate license. I was hired in the fall, and any of you know 2008 was when all hell broke loose, literally in the economy world, especially here in the U.S., and in Las Vegas especially, everything came to a stop. What do I know? I'm brand new to Las Vegas, just moved here from Michigan. In that industry, after I would have a tour, if any of you are familiar with timeshare sales, I would tell my closer, they really liked me. And they're like, Carrie, that's great, but are they buying? All that matters is that they're buying. It doesn't liking you doesn't pay the bills. And it hit me. It was because I was new back into the sales world. I was a stay-at-home mom for a few years before that. This was one of my first jobs after my divorce and getting back into the corporate world, into the working world. As yucky as it was, very bad time in the economy at that time. But I learned something. You're right, being liked doesn't pay the bills. So what I've taken this further with is with my clients, a lot of the times we think a potential client's going to buy. Well, they really liked me. They loved me. They really liked me. No, that doesn't always mean they're going to buy. That means that, hey, they want to take you out for drinks. That doesn't pay the bills. If you're looking for friends, that's great. If you're looking for joint venture partners or networking buddies, that's great. But at the end of the day, it's all about respect in business. That's where women and men are different. Men are very good at turning it off. It's all about business. It's not personal. Women, we're very different. We're wired differently. Everything's like a circuit breaker, all tapped into the same box, just sparking at any minute. Our family's attached to our business, attached to our client, attached to what shoes we want to wear tonight. It's all one big ball of crazy, right? And that's just how we're wired. It takes a very well-disciplined woman in business to go, you know what? This is business. This is personal. This is my you know, home life and knowing how to balance all of that. Guys, you got it, most of you anyway. So, respect. This is where you make the shift. I noticed there was a pattern where a lot of my friends, when I first moved to Vegas, as I was starting to grow into who I am today, and I'm always growing, I'm always a work in progress, they would ask me to parties, events, things that just didn't work well with my soul. And I felt this pull and tug. Should I say yes? Maybe I won't get asked to events anymore. I really don't want to go, but I really like them. It's not them. It's the environment that I didn't want to play in or didn't feel like my soul wanted to play in. It wasn't a soulful event. So let's just put it that way. Maybe partying, lots of drinking, lots of crazy, um, inauthentic times. So let's just put it that way. So I chose to be a leader and choose to just choose Carrie. I wasn't saying no to them. I was saying yes to Carrie. There's the difference there. People will actually respect that. They won't take it personally if they're aware in any way. They'll say, oh, that's not for you? Hmm, okay. And I noticed my friends started to shift into different activities. I started getting asked to different soulful events, more one-on-one -on -one conversation, deeper, meaningful time versus superficial, partying, drunken, you know, debauchery. <laughs> For lack of a better word, I live in Vegas. It happens a lot here. It doesn't fit well with who I am. I noticed my friends didn't go away. They didn't disrespect me. They didn't dislike me. In fact, they respected me more and started to make some shifts in their own life. Like, hey, you're going that way? Maybe that's a good way to go. Let me check that out too. So don't worry about being like, just even in your friends, clients, and whatever that looks like, the key is respect. Respect always lasts longer. Think of those that you admire from a distance, a celebrity, a public figure. Tony Robbins, for example, I'd love to pick on him. He's a great leader in my industry. Everyone respects him. Most people respect him. Even if he pisses you off that day and says something that just kind of rubs you the wrong way or maybe it's a good reflection in the mirror time, you still respect him, right? At the end of the day, you still respect him. Maybe you have a boss or someone in the, in the athletic world that you respect and admire from a distance. You just put them kind of on a pedestal a little bit and you respect and admire them. The key is you actually look worse. Let me go a little bit deeper. When you start liking everything and uh, wanting to be liked and for example, here's a perfect example. My phone is going bananas. <laughs> um, here's a perfect example. If you say yes to everything, for example, I'm going to do a, a role play here. 
your friends say, hey, where do you want to go? We're going to go out to dinner. Would you like to go to such and such restaurant? Whatever. Whatever works for me. I'm easy. It's all good. I don't care. I don't have any feelings about anything. You know what the word nice actually stands for? If you look at it, and this isn't truth, of course. It was a great acronym told to me by one of my bosses. Nice means ins nothing inside cares enough. It means you don't have a backbone. Let me say that again. Nice stands for nothing inside cares enough. N-I-C-E. It just kind of says I don't stand for anything. That feels yucky, doesn't it? Like you don't have any passion? You're just one of those wishy-washy people who will go with the flow of society? Don't stand for anything? Easily swept under the rug kind of personality? What kind of fun is that? No one takes you seriously and no one cares what you think. They're going to actually just kind of push you aside. You're a wallflower. What do you care about? You know, I started to take a stand for myself and it's changed my whole life. I set healthy boundaries. I say no to you because I'm saying yes to myself. I say no to all of the requests I get to meet up, get on a call. Carrie, I want to take you to coffee. No, because I have to say yes to myself, my clients, my family, and those that I love. My paying clients come first, guys. So, ironically, though, think about that nice acronym again. Go a little bit deeper than and just kind of explore crap. Nothing inside me cares enough. I used to I used to relatively date someone that was such a people pleaser. He said he would go to a gay bar, he would go to a strip club, whatever his friends wanted. He just wanted to be around his friends. He didn't care. He didn't have any standards. Didn't have any benchmarks. It just told me that you're that desperate for friends that you will just completely skirt by your own morals and beliefs just to have a friend? That's pretty sad. It says that you don't believe in yourself. It says that you don't love yourself. Your self-worth has to be up there. So raise the bar, guys. When you respect you, others will respect you. And trust me, liking you can disappear in a second. You can just look at someone the wrong way and they no longer like you. But respect lingers. It lasts. It sticks around. It creates a much yummier presence. So there you go, my dears. I'm going to let you go. That's the difference between being liked and respected, how to take it into the business world. So this benefits you. You want to be respected, right? You want people to pay you your prices, not just worrying about being liked and lowering your standards. That doesn't make anybody happy at the end of the day. Hope this was helpful to you guys. i got to let you go. Big hugs, big love. Bye, guys.